There's been a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fifth Seal, episode 46. I am your host, Norm, the Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. The Evangelical Norm. The Fifth Seal is a podcast I do to bring awareness and prayer for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Every year I count down the top 50 countries on Open Doors USA's World Watch List from January to October, <clears throat> excuse me, twice a month. I count down from 50 to 31, and then throughout the month of November, which I dubbed about 10 years ago to be Persecuted Church Awareness Month, every day of that month I count down from 30 to number one. It is a countdown, which is why the episode numbers go backwards. You're not going crazy. Two weeks ago was episode 47. Today is episode 46, and in two weeks will be episode 45, and so on throughout the year until we get to episode number one, which is the top country on Open Doors USA's world watch list, which is the worst country in the world for Christians to live based upon the persecution they endure for their faith in Jesus Christ. So that's a little uh, background on the podcast for those who are new. I want to say thank you again to everybody who shares, invites, does all that stuff because you are actually helping to increase our membership on the Fifth Seal Facebook page through invites, um, through the uh, Evangelical Norm YouTube channel because you like, comment, share videos, do all that stuff. And it is causing the uh, voices that join along with us to pray for our brothers and sisters to increase. And if you, so if you know anybody who would be willing to, would like to pray with us and, and know more about uh, the persecution that goes on around the world, please send them over to the Fifth Seal page on Facebook or the Evangelical Norm YouTube channel. Or if they don't have time to watch a, a 10 to 15 minute video, they can download the audio podcast anywhere where they get audio, uh, Amazon, Google Play, um, iTunes, Spotify, any of those places, just look for the fifth seal and the podcast will pop up. They can download it, put it in their earbuds, take it with them and join us as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in Christ. So that being said, it is Wednesday, March 9th, and this is our update on the persecuted church around the world. This from persecution.org. Christian convert assassinated in Iraq following TikTok video. A 20-year-old daughter of a Muslim cleric who converted to Christianity was found murdered on March 7th in northern Iraq. The assassination of Iman Sami, who was known as Maria, is suspected to have been a retaliation by her family following a TikTok video she posted where she was singing Christian spiritual songs. Jeff King, ICC's president, shared his concern that, quote, for someone born as a Muslim to be open about exploring Christianity is a tremendous act of bravery, as most Muslim background believers in the region face intense pressure from both their families and communities. Maria's TikTok post should not have ended with her death. Iraq is just emerging from a very difficult time when Christians experienced a horrific genocide. It is an important step toward healing for Iraq to pursue an investigation of due process into issues related to freedom of speech and religion, unquote. A Christian close to Maria said, quote, A member of my Bible study group gave her a Bible last month. Mostly she turned to Christianity and her family knew because of this video she posted on TikTok, unquote. Christian news site Ankawa De Today published on Facebook, quote, Iman Sami, known as Maria, was found by the police last night. She, su she suffered in her life because of her early marriage, where she drowned in marriage at the age of only 12 years old. After separating from her husband, she lived alone. She was an activist in the field of women's rights and a brave woman. She has videos on the TikTok app that reached hundreds of thousands of views. Her brother and uncle killed her yesterday, unquote. 
The murder of Maria was discovered just one day after Iraq's National Day of Coexistence and Tolerance, a day declared on the anniversary of Pope Francis's visit last year. Iraq's Christian community continues to suffer, to suffer the severe consequence of the ISIS genocide, and Muslim background believers are specifically at high risk of targeted violence because of their conversion to Christianity. The persecution faced by Iraq's Christian, Christian community has forced most to flee the country. So again, um, this is, it's hard. It, a lot of times I do these stories and, and they're faceless names in an, an article. And that doesn't give the excuse to not be moved by them. We should be. Um, again, as you, as you go through this, it's the same with like abortion ministry. There's a, a numbness that comes with it to where you're able to, to kind of get through the story or get through the day, the ministry, without breaking down crying when you truly think about what is going on. But here we have the ability to put a face to the name and not just a face of videos. I looked at her TikTok. Um, and again, obviously, I have no idea what it is she's saying in half of these because she's not speaking English. She's speaking, I'm assuming, um, uh, Kurdish or some Iraqi Arabic something um, but the one video the one I'm assuming I'm going to play it later in this podcast for you um, but I can hear her saying Esau which is the Arabic word for Jesus so I'm assuming this is a video she made that caused her brother and uncle to decide to engage in an honor killing and and murder their sister and niece simply because she converted to Christianity so um, pray for the family, pray for those who she was in Bible study with, who th was going to church with, pray for that Christian community, um, pray for her family, pray that God would use this to draw even those who, who assassinated her, who murdered her to repentance and faith and, and that somehow they would, uh, they would reunite in heaven, that that would be a joyful reunion um, as they can, as God would hold, use his Holy Spirit to draw them, co convict them of their sin and draw them to faith and repentance in Christ. So we'll pray for that. Um, and that brings us to our world watch list country for today, which is Brunei number 46. So some basic facts about Brunei, its region is Asia the persecution type is Islam is Islamic oppression. The main religion is Islam. The persecution level is very high. The population of Brunei is 450,000, of which about 42,600 are Christian, so about 10%. The government is an absolute monarchy, and the leader is Sultan and Prime Minister Sir Hassanal Bolkaya. What does persecution look like in Brunei? The Sultan is seen as the protector and defender of the Muslim faith, and leaving Islam is illegal. Converts can be punished under penal law, and families and communities will exert great pressure to, quote, bring them back, unquote, to their original faith. Christians tend not to face outright violence, however. Non-traditional Christian communities cannot be registered as churches, but have to be registered as companies, societies, or family centers. As such, they are treated as a secular organization and are required to submit their financial and operational reports to the government every year. Sharia law continues to be introduced in the country and implemented more widely. The implementation of the Sharia law penal, Sharia law penal code has increased insecurity and fear among Brunei's Christian population and has increased the pressure felt by Christians in public and private life. Christians from a Muslim background are the most vulnerable to persecution. Uh, so prayer points for Brunei. Pray for pastors to be strengthened and continually equipped to serve and lead their congregations. Pray that young Christians would resist the temptation to convert to Islam so they can marry. Ask God to encourage younger believers to remain in the country for the long-term health of the church. And thank God that he is more powerful than Sharia law and is not weakened by strict regulations. Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for this time we have to come together to lift up our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in you. Lord, we praise you that you have provided for us uh, this social media platform 
where we can come together across great distances and even across the span of time, Lord, as many people will watch this video later or listen to the podcast, but yet still join their voices with us as we pray for those who are persecuted because of their faith in you. Father, we lift up um, those who were loved ones, who were church family and other family of uh, of Maria, Iman, Sami, Lord, um, we pray that you would comfort them, that this this incident of her willingness to literally proclaim her faith publicly in a place where most believers are hiding their faith, Lord, that that would be used for your glory, that you would use it to draw people to yourself, to strengthen the, the, the faith of the Christians around her, to embolden them, to proclaim your gospel even in the face of violence and persecution. Lord, I pray that her brother and her uncle and even her father, Lord, would be convicted of their sin, that they would turn to you in repentance and faith, Father, um, that they would understand that, that Maria now being absent from the body, she is present with you, um, and that that would, that would be a source of, of what they can look forward to to be with her again, Lord. But please draw them to yourself. Draw them to repentance. Draw them to faith. But, Lord, we pray that justice would be done, that this would not be something that... Uh, that Iraqi law would just overlook as, you know, men murdering women and not caring, which is, has happened, Lord. These honor killings go on over and over again, and we pray that, that this time that justice would be done. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Brunei. We pray for the pastors there, that you would uh, continually help them to equip them, that you would bring in other Christians to walk alongside of them for for whether it's education, whether it's for just uh, support, mentoring, that you would help them to grow as they lead the flocks that you've given to them, Lord. Father, we pray for the young people there that would be tempted to, uh, to convert to Islam simply because that's the only way they can marry. Father, we pray that, that you would encourage them to share the gospel with, with uh, the, the youth around them and that as you draw those um, young people to repentance and faith, Lord, that that they would have options within the church to marry and not have to look to convert to another religion to, to marry somebody in their community. Lord, we also pray that you would keep these young people in these areas so that the church can grow and thrive with through childbirth, through people growing up and, and getting old in the church, that you would uh, encourage the older men and women to mentor and disciple those who are younger. And Father, we do just praise you that you are greater than Sharia law. We praise you that that you are greater than those who would uh, murder your followers, that you are greater than those who would uh, lock up and, and, and brutalize and beat and maim and torture those who follow you simply because they understand your gospel, that they understand that they are sinners in need of a savior. And Lord, so we, we praise you for that. We praise you that, that you are doing all these things for your glory and that you will use all these things for your glory from, from Maria's death to uh, the simple pastor in Brunei who is there to proclaim the gospel and, uh, and lead the flock that you've given him, Lord, that you would, we pray that you would be glorified in all of these things for it is in your name and for your glory that we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you guys for taking the time out to join me. 10 to 15 minutes every couple of weeks and then once a day throughout the month of November. Again, if you know anybody who you, who you can invite to join us, please do send them to the different places. Fifth Seal on Facebook, Evangelical Norm Channel on YouTube or anywhere to get those audio podcasts. If you haven't already, subscribe. Uh, like, share, do whatever so we can get more and more people joining with us to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in Christ. And before I go, before we, we hit that final um, thing, I just want to play this, this clip of uh, Maria I Iman, Iman Sami. Maybe. Not. 
With that, as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. Till next time. Soli Deo Gloria.